Hi again, everybody. I have a story here from Misty. Okay, so this story is about a very good friend and college roommate of mine that ended up in a very unfortunate situation. I have already spoken to her, and although she has given consent to share her story, she told me to leave her name, leave out her name, so for the sake of the story, we'll call her Molly. Freshman year of college, Molly was dating a guy she had known for quite a while. She had met him at space camp back when they were 14 years old. They started out as friends, but later decided to make it more when they were older and found that they had feelings for one another. At first, for her, it was great. He was really sweet and kind, the kind of guy she had always knew and befriended for so long. That is until he joined a fraternity at the University of Missouri, where he was attending. It was a long-distance relationship for them, but they had pretty much determined that they could go the, long, go the distance because of their long-time pen pal and visiting friendship. He grew up in Mexico City, and she grew up not too far away from where I grew up, up outside Yorktown, Virginia. Anyway, back to the story. He had joined this fraternity. From that moment on, his whole persona had changed. He, he had all of a sudden gone from this loving, caring, and thoughtful individual to this non-caring, whatever bitch attitude, jackass. And I say jackass very generous, generously because he was, in fact, so much more. At first, she thought it was mainly the pressure of school that was getting to him. And I myself even told her that maybe that's what it was. As more and more time progressed, though, she saw more of this jackassery coming from him. She decided one day that maybe she needed to take a couple weeks to, and go see him. Maybe once he saw her again, he would remember all those great times as a kid and remember the fact that he had fallen in love with her and that was not something to be thrown away just because of some stupid fraternity status. She stayed in Missouri for two weeks, and she told me she would, from what I gathered, they had a pretty amazing time. She did tell me, however, that, that he had gotten into drinking pretty heavily and partying, and this was a side of him she, certainly, she was certainly not used to. This also was the first time these two were intimate with one another. As I said before, the relationship progressed pretty slow because of the distance, and even when they did manage to visit each other through the years, they had always vowed that they would never cross any lines that their relationship was not mature enough for. Not a bad thing at all. Well, this experience was different. They were indeed intimate that two weeks, and she told me it was rather disturbing all the sexual acts he was into. She had always knew him as kind of shy and reserved. But this person was far from that. He was into S&M and making her swallow and all kinds of other things that she totally did not see coming. At some point, she had even started her monthly while she was there, and he insisted on having sex with her, even though she was not comfortable. Towards the end of the visit, more and more of his friends started getting involved in their relationship, and by her words, she said it felt like his fraternity brothers were, je were jealous cheerleader types, telling him he could do better and that he needed to focus on school, and she was trying to stop him from achieving his dreams, which was totally not the case. I knew Molly pretty well, and she was studying to be a high school English teacher. She loved her studies and thought of the future in education and thought of a future in education and would have never in a million years tried to stop someone else from achieving their passion, especially someone she loves so much like this guy. But she gracefully left after two weeks and went back to our school. A few weeks passed and the guy thought he loved her so a few weeks passed and the guy she thought loved her so much began rejecting her phone calls. She found out he was she found out she was pregnant. She called him to tell him, and he asked her what she wanted him to do about it. He had dreams and did not need her or a child getting in the way. I thought she got her period, Doreen, though. That's weird. She was just on her ass over this. She had no idea what was happening to the caring, loving guy she befriended and fell in love with. Long story short, she fell down a flight of stairs and had to be hospitalized. 
At first they said the pregnancy was fine. She was intent on having or keeping the baby and was worried sick about it. A few weeks after her injury, she began getting really high fevers and was very ill most of the time, even more so than normal morning sickness. I, told, I took her to the ER and it was discovered at that point the fetus was dead and they had to do a DNC to remove it. Molly was devastated and to this day she has not recovered emotionally from the trauma. Fast forward a few years, she actually had gotten in contact with the guy again. At first he seemed to back off. At first he seemed back to be back to his old self and she actually forgave him for abandoning her while she was pregnant. They even went out a few times for drinks and dinner while he was in town. It seemed they may actually get back together. Eventually they started talking regularly again and she told him what had happened with the whole pregnancy thing and the only reply she got from him was as follows. Well sometimes things happen for a reason but you're happy now and that's all that and that should all be that all that matters. It's okay, don't be upset because you never know what the future will hold, blah, blah, blah. Nothing, bunch, nothing but a bunch of pseudo-intellectual philosophical re regurgitation that he probably picked up in either Psych 101 or Philosophy 101 in college, which is, by the way, useless in the real world dealing with real situations and human pain and emotion. At some point, Molly got so sick and tired of this that she asked me what she should do because he seemed like he was into her all over again, but she was not seeing any real emotion coming from him like, sorry, hey, sorry you lost the baby, or hey, I'm really sorry about the things went down, the way, the way things went down with us, and if I can only go back and change it, etc. Nothing. It was like it never happened, but it was still very real for her. So I advised her she needed to come out and blatantly ask him, why did you just use me like a piece of trash and discard me when we had gotten into this situation that we created? Why did you just bail on me? I was hurting and in trouble and I thought you were my friend. I told her to ask, ask, I told her to ask like that word for word. Well, she did and his answer after all these years was, it was just, in, it was just too intense and I was just starting my life and I couldn't handle it. Well, Molly at that point said to him she was sorry he felt that way and decided at that point never to speak to him again. She has been in and out of counseling for losing that baby in that manner. And she did, and I have to say, she is probably one of the strongest people I know for having survived that ordeal because losing a child is a very tough pill to swallow for, the, uh, for those of us with a heart. She did manage to get her degree and achieved her dream of being a teacher, but she has never forgotten neither the ordeal nor the way he treated her during and even years after the ordeal. He is now an engineer, president of his company, and living the good life with loads of money where he was pretty much rewarded and got off scot-free with no responsibility taken whatsoever. She has a difficult road of healing and going to school on and off depending on how she was feeling. It took her a little bit longer than him to achieve her dream, but luckily for her, she did. So this is the point of the story. So the point of the story is to discuss narcissistic behavior with these college frats and sororities because one of their problems, I forgot to mention, were these sorority girls always being trifling and trying to manipulate him and telling him she wasn't good enough because she hadn't even pledged to a to a sorority and that it was and that it said something about her level of commitment to the future blah 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 they are known to go on, to only go after guys that have non society girlfriends i don't think this topic has ever been covered maybe there are listeners with similar stories out there about this Anyway, thank you for the vids. Keep them coming, and lots of love to you and Charlene. You know, I wish I could give you more perspective on college fraternities, but I wasn't in one, so I really don't know much about it. I will say this about the whole 
what your friend did. Um, look, to me, if you are in college and if you're not going to the same college, look, it is silly to try to maintain a long distance relationship in college. It, it, it's really unreasonable to think that's going to happen. Nor should, in my opinion, nor should it. I mean, you are way too young to be committed. Look, you're supposed to be going to college for the full experience, meeting new people. And look, you really are limiting yourself when you try to keep a long distance relationship in college because that's not really what college is for. You know, it's supposed to be about a life experience. Now, I'm not saying that uh, there hasn't been success stories with it. Obviously, there has. But in the grander, grander scheme of things, you're both cheating each other. Because even if you do make it out, and then you get older, and then you realize, like, you kind of missed out on a big part of the college experience, both of you, I think relationships are more prone to fail. Now, I don't know if his behavior is brought on. It's probably definitely supported by that whole college frat sorority lifestyle. I mean, I've heard similar things. But, I mean, that's who he was going in. The sorority and fraternity just brings it out of them. Um, in a long-distance relationship, it's much easier to, I guess, to... To, to portray whatever persona you want about yourself. And when, but when you're and you're able to hide, you're more susceptible to some suggestion at first. But when you go to a place like college and you fall under, you know, the, the lure, I guess, of a sorority or a fraternity, followers will follow. Followers will follow and all it's really doing to me all the fraternities really do is bring out who the nar who who the person really is, or in this case, who a narcissist is or isn't. I mean, there's a lot of immaturity. I don't know if I'm going to the level to say this guy's a full blown narcissist, other than might be immature, could be narcissistic, definitely fucked up what he did, and I'm not excusing that whatsoever. And it doesn't, it doesn't alleviate the pain of what happened to your friend, obviously. I mean, it's a horrible thing. And my concern would be, okay, not that she's not upset about losing the baby, but is it, is it more than losing the baby that way? Is it more than just him? Is it a realization that she might feel... Maybe she felt stronger about him than he did about her. And that could be part of the struggle and the rejection. And then to lose the baby the way you did and being rejected and he's running off and being both your college students. I could see how it can spiral like that and how it could really hold her back. So, you know, it's there's a lot of factors here. And... To blame it solely on the fraternity, I don't think is 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 accurate. Not that it wouldn't be fair, but I don't think it's accurate. I just think the fraternity brings out who he was to begin with. So, thank you for your story. Uh, I really appreciate it. Thank you, everybody watching. Please leave any opinions or advice in the comment section below. And again, if you want your story read on the channel, you have a narcissist you'd like to expose, or a topic you'd like me to cover, you know what to do with the PayPal and the email link in the description box. I'll have the video right back to you. This is Ali Matthews. Thanks for watching. See you all again soon. Bye.